Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I was in line at Publix the other day, and lo and behold, staring me in the face is this History Channel magazine on secret societies. So I just throw it into the pile, and I was just buying like $5 worth of stuff. This thing was $13.99, but I just wanted it, and I didn't have the money, and I just got it anyhow. And uh, you can see on the back, it's advertising Alien Con. We don't believe in aliens. I would believe that anything like that, obviously, that aren't extraterrestrials from another planet. They are demons. But I was really shocked at um, some of the things in here. You know, Alice Bailey, years ago, or didn't she write for Lucius Trust? She, uh, I think this is from Rosicrucians. I'll let you be looking at that while I'm talking. Um, she said that in 1946, they would be an externalization of the hierarchy, that eventually they would uh, let the, the secret societies be known. Wasn't it Mazzini who said that secret societies rule the world and all of this? I don't know. So I think this is where the skull and bones are. And this also lists a list of the secret societies in here. This is done on the History Channel. So this is staring me in the face at Publix. You know, this is not something. It, there are secret societies. I would tend to say, obviously, Christians are not supposed to belong to Christian, secret societies. I'm doing another video on that because... Uh, we're supposed to let our yay be yay, nay be nay. Don't swear not at all, neither by heaven, it's God's throne, neither by the earth, it's its footstool. So we're just supposed to not swear. And these people swear to each other. And, and it, it comes across very with inequality that you, like if, if if you've done something wrong, but in a secret society, I'm supposed to get you off. See, that's just not a good thing. Um, I think this would represent kind of the Knights Templar or the Priory of Zion. I wrote, you know, like it didn't have the Priory of Zion. Of course, there were secret societies. Even Pythagoras had a secret society. Like he had gone to Egypt in the 5th and 6th centuries B.C. He had uh, secret societies. I'm writing myself a note. Can... Christians belong to secret societies. Christians belong to secret societies. Because I want to do a video on that secret society. This is like my idea sheet, which runs many, many pages fill of things to do videos on. I only have about a hundred thousand ideas to do videos on. That's no exact. If you ever want to just work you know, the the New Life YouTube channel has tried to be set up to where it's timeless, that you can press New Life and then go into different things like Pastor Waldron's library or teachings on various subjects, verse by verse teachings on Romans, verse by verse teachings on Genesis. And so it's we don't do just like popular blogs and here I am, I'm giving you a word for today. Things, we're trying to make it a uh, something that is a resource that again you can look it up years from now and there would be things there that you could look at I'm very grateful that a lot of the videos on the YouTube channel are what's known as evergreens that they're getting views from many years ago and they're still getting many thousands of views believe it or not so a lot of our newer videos people are like you only get a hundred views not even that many or 200 views uh, you know 40 views and all this and I'm like a lot of times they'll catch on later so I see like the uh, secret uh, claw grip and the black and white checkering those of you that are uh, set up like in masonry you know about the black and white checkering and so like a lot of music videos, I get this from Vigilant Citizen, a little bit of use, some of that's just information, it's a shame to even talk about those things done in secret you know, they're black and white checkering and they're like, yes, that's Monarch Mind Control and MK Ultra Butterflies and then, you know, Secret Society Control. But there are secret societies. 
So this actually goes into the Eleusian Mysteries. Fascinating books or yeah, that you can get is like Roman and Greek secret societies. I've read some things on that. You know, of course, masonry would claim to go back to Solomon's time. So this is fascinating stuff right here. And uh, of course, you go into the Pythagorean Brotherhood. So like, you know, the Pythagorean theorem and stuff, this was considered mathematics to be passed down. And they got a lot of that from the Egyptians, like Plato would travel to Egypt and he was actually initiated into Egyptian mysteries. He talked about riding on a river or something underneath the pyramids. Dualism, this would be like the Cathars, the Albigenses, the Knights Templar. A lot of people think the central banks come back from the Knights Templar. Um, and it's just an amazing, if you've ever read Knights Templar stuff, like the Prior of Zion, I noticed it wasn't mentioned that I found. So a lot of people would say, see, it's not mentioned because that's the ones really pulling the strings right there. You know, uh, the Rosicrucians real big. You have Robert Rudd, prominent physician. I remember I used to get the Parade Magazine. You might remember that. It would come in the Sunday paper. And almost invariably, they'd have an ad to join the Grosicrucians. So here's like the Freemasons. Now let me just say about most people in secret societies, like the Freemasons are probably the biggest secret society mentioned here. Maybe the tricycle gangs or the triads in the Orient. Like, see, I think where it's like, People tend to be intellectually lazy. They tend to group all peoples together. Well, they believe that. They act like that. They, and it's just not true. Same way with Masons. Most Masons are in it because they think it's just like you serve barbecue and it's a good place to get together once a month. You know, they're not sitting here. And by the way, we're working for World Dominion. But in its higher orders, uh, there you go. And many people have noticed how the Google Mail thing looks just like a Masonic apron, <laughs> as in this picture here. Hey, and Google's weird me out. They did the Il Coronatu at me. They're like putting a spell on me when I went on Google the other day. You know, they're doing the hand signals, Satan hand signals. I won't even do it to you. It was like, ooh, that's really weird. And uh, setting the uh, record straight women in Freemasonry, Native Americans in Freemasonry. So I was just really uh, pleased that they had, you know, that they're broaching the subject, even though referring back to Alice Bailey and the externalization of the hierarchy, they said, once we know you can't stop us, we'll reveal our hand. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, Britain's preeminent secret society is perhaps the best known secret society of the late 19th century. I mean, you have the Theosophical Society, you have Eliester Crowley, um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in this. Bram Stoker, W.B. Yeats. And uh, also you had the Theosophical Society with Madame Blavatsky and uh, Helen Petrovina Blavatsky and uh, Annie Wood Bizant and a lot of people like the Ghostly Guild, a lot of people like Westcott and Hort were involved in a lot of these weirded out secret societies in the socialist movement. Here's a picture of Blavatsky right here. She's actually trying to do a satanic sign in this. The Thule Society with Hitler, big deal. And like in Harry Potter, I never watched any of the things, never read any of the books, but they said there was actually an off play of Blavatsky's name in there. And of course, Hitler, you know, like he was trying, like he brought the altar of Zeus at Pergamum because it was said whoever owned that would rule the world. The Ordo Templus Orientis. That's Aliester Crowley. See, he says, Megatherion 666, do what thou wilt. This is the whole of the law. Of course, that was Anton Zandor LaVey's first commandment in the Satanic Bible as well. So, like, you have... Uh, who Ozzy Osbourne singing Mr. Crowley, were you raised from the dead and all this. 
Secret societies timeline. A lot of secret societies like turn into cults. They've even got the mafia in here. They kill people. They kill themselves. Jonestown. They commit suicide. That Ray Elian cult that they thought the Comet Kahotek or whatever was coming and uh, killed themselves to go. I mean, just weird stuff. Uh, Alm Shrinko in Japan tried to kill people. I mean, don't join a cult, man. Get Jesus. Now, a lot of people say, well, isn't Christianity a cult? No, I mean, in the, maybe the broadest sense of the term, cult means common worship. That's where the term culture comes from. So, I mean, obviously it has a set of common beliefs, but it's for the good of everybody. It's not killing everybody. Oh, how about the crusade? Well, we, we were getting killed during that too. We were not part of that. Okay, the order of the solar temple. Bingo, the Illuminati. Also known as the Order of the Perfectibilist. If you ever want to do a legitimate reading of history on that, there's several books, but really the best one is Terry Melanson's called The Perfectibilist because that was their like their original name. But they really existed. I've read books about the great Illuminati scare. Thomas Jefferson was called Illuminati. You had people like Morse, you know, whose son gave us Morse code. Who was Timothy DeWight, the grandson of Jonathan Edwards, who was president of Yale, getting up preaching against the Illuminati. Seth Payson's famous book. I've got that from 1802. So the Illuminati and the founding fathers. Yep, George Washington was well acquainted with it, and he wrote about it. By the late 1780s, Thomas Jefferson was accused of belonging to the mysterious secret society. Um, John Quincy Adam, a Mason who later became the sixth president of the United States, accused Jefferson in writing of using Masonic lodges for subversive Illuminati purposes. Um, isn't that amazing? And he even talked about Adam Weishaupt. You know, he said, well, he's just a philosopher. He's a good guy. Um, so, the eternal flame. So, you have a picture of the Statue of Liberty saying that is an, uh, an illuminous sign. This is from the History Channel. The all-seeing eye in the back. Baphomet. Upside down. Hey, and if you ever want to read a great book by C.S. Lewis on secret societies, that hideous strength showed you how the world really works. Um, so G. Snyder sent the book John Robinson's Proofs of a Conspiracy. And he was like, I mean, he's in the Encyclopedia Britannica and stuff. Uh, like doing articles. He was head of the Natural Society and stuff. And he wrote about the Illuminati. Um, so here's George Washington. He said, I have heard much of the nefarious and dangerous plan and doctrines of the Illuminati. The fact is, I preside over none lodges. I believe, notwithstanding that none of the lodges in this country are contaminated with the principles ascribed to the Society of the Illuminati. So, in a later letter to Snyder, the Baptist preacher, Washington clarified his position, writing, it, does not, it was not my intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati had not spread to the United States. On the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of that than I am. The idea that I meant to convey was that I did not believe that the lodges of Freemason in this country had as societies endeavored to propagate the diabolical tenets. So George Washington truly... Now, they wrote a letter to John Adams and said, you know, because when they got persecuted in 1785 on the continent, they said, can we m migrate and immigrate to the United States? And they called the United States Eleusius, like the Eleusian Mysteries. And John Adams says, sure, go ahead, but we don't want subversive. And that's what the seven, 1798, the Alien and Sedition Act was all about. The French Revolution, caused by the Illuminati, J.J. Bode, and so many others uh, whose names escape me right now. They're right on the tip of my tongue. And um, but JJC Bode was one that took over from Weishaupt, who lived to be till 1830, and um, was to keep the Illuminati out, basically. Um, so a lot of neat stuff here. Opus Di. Whoa, Catholic Secret Society. There is the. Uh, memories that when you're in the opus di to practice self-discipline you tie that around your leg and you pull it 
every so often, maybe even to draw blood, so you're constantly not given to pleasure. Uh, Opus Di in the United States. Let you look, look here. Didn't mean to really keep you this long, but we just got just a very short time to go. I appreciate Brother Mallory taking a few more moments here. All right, the Explorer, the Old Man of the Mountain, the Assassins. Yes, everybody knows about the Assassins. These were uh, like Indian and maybe Islamic assassins somewhere in that I, it's been years since I studied it but the name assassin comes from hashish because they were the uh, assassins they were killing you because they were high on hashish so that will be fascinating when marijuana is legalized but alcohol is already legalized here's the mafia that was a secret society I love the mafia's ten commandments this is great page 66 okay no one can present himself directly to another one of our friends. There must be a third person to do it. Never look at the wives of friends. Never be seen with cops. Don't go to pubs and clubs. Always be available for Cosa Nostra is a duty. Even if your wife is about to give birth, appointments must absolutely be respected. This is the Ten Commandments of the Mafia. Wives must be treated with respect. When asked for any information, the answer must be the truth. Remember, I mean, these people would, were the ones that you had to hand, hold your hand in a flame till they told you to stop. I mean, money cannot be appropriated if it belongs to others or to other families. People who can't be part of Cosa Nostra or the Mafia, anyone who's had a close relative in the police, anyone with a two-timing relative in the family, look at that, your whole family has to be faithful, anyone who behaves badly and doesn't hold to moral values. RFK put them out here's top five mob hits the chosen ones the brother of Largordunia Heaven's Gate UFO cult Om Shrinko uh, the Knights of the Apocalypse which I'm not acquainted with the triads yes and there it is Skull and Bones the Illuminati in America at Yale University they also have scroll and key there but this is so i mean i know it's just coincidence that there's only like 800 living members of the skull and bones only 15 people a year get in it and that our presidential uh candidates in 2004 were both in that little 800 member skull and bones john Kerry and george bush as was george bush's daddy that picture they've got they're doing the masonic thing that's why they have their legs there and uh, here's notable members like William Buckley. I can't believe Bill Buckley. But he pushed out Welch from the old right and kind of started a new right. But they claim to have Geronimo's skull there. There's a lot of things. So this is a great little book on secret societies, man. If you're interested. Now, my biggest advice to you is to be apostolic, live for God, pray, talk in tongues, win souls, live for Jesus. Because this stuff can get you doing all kinds of stupid stuff. You know, go vote, pray, be a politician if that's what God wants you to do. But uh, in Sons of Liberty, Boston Tea Party, but don't get caught. Don't be trying to use all your energy fighting against the New World Order. Come on. fight Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So these people pray that their, their, any powers they've got would be broken, and that they would even get the Holy Ghost and get baptized in Jesus' name. What them all. So the Freemasons, Skull and Bones, Secret Societies, and Popular Culture. The actress Angelina Jolie portrays an explorer on a quest to find and unlock ancient secrets around the globe in the Tomb Raider films. Of course, uh, no uh, Raiders of Lost Ark, very similar. The Count of Monte Cristo, which is an amazing read. I think I've read that twice. Absolutely incredible the Knights Templar yeah Harrison Ford's fictional character Indiana Jones searches the world for lost treasures uh, Knight, Ford comes upon one of the Knights Templar charged with guarding Christianity's greatest relics 
Okay, Da Vinci Code. Of course, in Da Vinci Code, you've got the Priory of Zion, you've got the Opus Di all around. And then it's got fictional secret societies all through here. All right, the conclusion. The conclusion. Um, here's a painting. It looks almost like a Maxfield Parish painting of... Um, of the meeting of the Pythagorean Society. It's actually a very beautiful painting. Then a wood carving of another. I've been to like the, uh, there's another great movie exposing secret societies called The Brotherhood of the Bell. It's amazing. Ford was a Glenn Ford, who was a big exposer of secret societies, played in that. But uh, the order of the, the thistle, I've sat in the 28 chairs there in Britain. The Ancient Order of Gorgamons. That's a, so, secret societies. What a fascinating thing. And uh, look, just don't join one. Pray for those that are in them, that they'll get the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name. I'm glad in the United Pentecostal Church Manual it says don't belong to secret societies. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.